we're going to fantastic books and where to find them that day has finally come it's time for me to finally talk about how i feel about tower of dawn by sarah j mass this book <laughs> so this book pretty much i had trouble reading after reading this book between this and Lord of Shadows, I didn't read properly for a good two, three months afterwards. And with Lord of Shadows, it was because it devastated me. With Tower of Dawn, that was not the case. I did start tabbing. This book is back when I still tabbed. Um, I wish I still did sometimes, but it's a really, it's really hard to do when you're out and about reading. And when you're really into it, you don't want to stop to stick a tab in. And when I did, just put this out there, orange was things that I absolutely hated. So yeah, there. and when I stopped having it's about the same sort of time I stopped reading. Now I did intend to do a vlog the entire way through reading and I will put the clips on in a minute that I did film including sort of me starting reading it and what I called the Kale scale. So I loved Kale at the beginning of the Throne of Glass series and I'm going to say spoilers now for the entire Throne of Glass series and for this book. You've been warned. <laughs> Once he realised Alien's fate heritage and was basically a dick after that moment I hated his guts, I couldn't stand him. And his behaviour after that just didn't really help either. I had a few friends as well who weren't that keen on him uh, and after I read this book they then liked him and a few lot of people were saying that this book redeemed Cal for them and I was like it'd be nice I'd like to better like him again because he was an awesome character to begin with. So for that I mean I wasn't excited about the, the idea of getting a Cal book in general especially in the place of the last Throne of Glass book. But no, I decided I would give it a go. I would give Kale his chance at redemption. I will show you the vlogs now that I did start filming. I think it's guaranteed that if you stay up late reading, your toddler will wake yeah. you up at 5am. So it's been a couple of days since I recorded last. Uh, I now have a physical copy of Tower of Dawn. My best friend picked me one up, so I'm super, super grateful. Thank you. Um, just because I can tab the actual book, and it's a lot more difficult to do that with the Kindle. It's like 7am, hence why I'm wearing like yesterday's makeup and my hair is greasy as hell. I did read a bit of work yesterday, which I couldn't do reactions for because I was at work. Um, so I just wanted to speak about that quickly, and that's just the fact that I still think Kale is a giant dick. He has assumed on a couple of occasions now that Nestrin will be sharing his room. Uh, and she's like mega upset and he's like, oh, uh, so whose room are you, uh, are we staying in? And I was like, Jesus Christ, there are more important things to think about than your penis. There's a scene with Yurine and, uh, the manhood, can your manhood, uh, com reach completion, I think was the, uh, phrase she is. And they're like, no answer. She's like, I'm just going to underline no, um, or something to that equivalent was absolutely brilliant. I'm loving, loving Yurine at the moment. She is so sassy and I love that. Yeah, so yeah, Chaos has been a bit of a dick. Uh, Nesrin went to visit her family, got back late from visiting her family because she lost track of time and he's like super mad at her. Yeah, I'd be worried and that's fair enough, but he's just like mad at her and I'm like, that's not what you need to be right now. So everyone else has read this. I mean, some of my friends, Steph, has finished this book already, and I'm like, really? I'm, I'm 111 pages through. Just I've had no time to read. Really, I'm hoping today I'll get some more reading done or tonight with any luck. But yeah, everyone seems to be enjoying it, loving it, and loving Kale again. And I'm like, he's still got some work to do for me at the moment. So I'm guessing some other stuff must happen. We'll see. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far though, other than Kale being a dick. So I may have spent half the night reading, I'm about 200 pages through now. This book is so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. I did for about for maybe five minutes think Kale wasn't too bad, um, but unfortunately that didn't last very long and then he was a dick again, so the Kale scale is still on the downside. Unfortunately, I'm still not keen on him. Uh, Yurine and anyone else has been pretty cool. The I love. I want a bastard cat. They sound adorable and amazing. Also, they can protect me because this, the scene in the library kind of shook me up reading it at like far too late at night. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was really awesome. But unfortunately, yeah, no change on the kale thing yet. All right, so I'm 275 pages through now. I think I hate kale more now than I did to start with, which was unexpected. Um, he's just kind of messing around with Yurine, um, like, in front of Nestorin, and that's really not cool. Yeah, I'm just, I'm annoyed at him that 
that Yurin feels bad, if that makes sense. Um, I'm blaming him for that. I know it's not technically his fault that she feels that way, but I feel like he's been leading her on. So I do think he is kind of responsible for her feeling that way, in, in a sense. So yeah, I'm minus figures again for Kale, because nah. Now I started reading this book a couple of days after release and I was just going through my notes on my phone because uh, for a while I was making notes on my phone because it was easier and on the 23rd of September at quarter past nine I wrote a list called Reasons Kale is Still a Dick. I hadn't finished the book at this point but we had. The so whose bed are we sleeping in thing so that's basically when him and Esther get there they've had a fight she's upset and he's all like oh so whose bed are we sleeping in then I'm like not the time not the time not even attempting to understand or comfort Nestor when she's worried about her family again he just doesn't seem to ever try and comfort her and I know it's sort of just that he just in fact no I was going to try and justify that but no because no not telling her when he can move his toes at last that's Oh my god, that's completely unforgivable. The fact that he's starting to heal and starting to get better, she would be pleased by that. And surely he, you know, she came all that way with him to help him get better, to help him heal. And when he's finally starting to get somewhere, he just doesn't tell her. Like, no! Groping Yurin in front of Nestrin. Yeah, so, yeah, they're all high on this weird smoke incense stuff. But he's literally, like, pretty much in front of Nestrin, just, like, touching up Yurin. I'm like, hmm making Yurin feel like shit after leading her on and in the same vein apologising for it looking like he slept with Nesrin. So most of the things that annoy about him are just him fucking around Nesrin and Yurin basically, excuse my language. So Yurin goes back to the tower after walking in on Kale and Nesrin waking up in bed together and Kale's all like it's not as if we slept together and I was like D Nesrin is basically your partner at this point and as far as Yurin knows and you just apologising, especially in front of Nestrin like that, it's just... Ugh. And then poor Yurin goes back and feels like, crap, like she is the reason everything's going wrong and being horrible. I'm just like, no, Kale is being a dick. When I ignore Kale, the book actually wasn't that bad. I definitely think it's probably the weakest out of maybe the entire Throne of Glass series. The story wasn't that gripping. And I liked the outcome. I liked the fact that Cal isn't completely fixed. Not just because I don't like him, uh, but because I don't want that to happen. I didn't want him to just go off the magical land. He'll come back fixed. Oh, I can walk again. I'm amazing. Because that's demeaning to people who have disabilities and people who aren't as mobile. Making them feel, I think, that you can't fight. Defend the ones and the things that you love because you can't walk. He literally, at the end, realises that no matter if he's on his cane, if he's in a chair, he will defend those people he loves. And that is the one moment, one moment in this entire series, since I've started hating him, that I didn't, for like two seconds, hate him. Okay, that's probably a strong word still. I don't completely hate him at the end of this book, but I still, I'm like... If I think I probably just care about him less now. I'm not... I think hate is probably a word reserved for a character you really, really care about. Even if it's in a bad way. And I'm just like, meh. I'm more bothered about Yurin. Yurin was awesome. Yurin was such a great character in this book. She was strong, but she had her weaknesses. She d stood up for what she believed in. And she didn't take shit. I love that when she realises Kale's being a dick, she just baits him. She just tells him he's useless and whatever else. And it riles him up and he like s completely snaps and sorts his shit out to be fair whenever i think of cow though i just think of the the brooding hero the ya brooding hero twitter account i'll put a link in the description if you've not checked it out you really need to they've got a book out and everything now it's hilarious and he's just that kind of character through and through he's like a proper trope of that I did like a lot of the stuff in this book though. I did love the story that Nestrin goes off and has on her own, well, with the prince. Uh, the spiders in that did really, really terrify me. I did like the fact as well that we find a shifter and what are the odds that this only other shifter happens to be related to Lysandra. It will be interesting to see how that affects her though in the coming Last Throne of Glass book. I think it definitely would have made a good novella and I think I would have preferred it as a novella because it is a really big book. It's not small. And I didn't want that much kale. Uh, and not even that, just the story itself. It's a good story, but it's just too... It feels not necessarily stretched, but I think there was a lot of stuff that I just didn't really need to hear about. I initially gave this a three stars and good reads. In fact, actually, I think I originally gave it a two star, and then 
after I got over my kale hate, I boosted up to three stars. Because I said the story isn't bad, I just I think a lot of it was overshadowed for me by Kale. Um, but if I didn't hate him, this book could be pretty awesome, I imagine. Not amazing, but pretty awesome, which is not only a level, I think. So um, it's awesome that we've got all this new stuff that happened. But I definitely would have put it to be a novella and for us to have already had the Throne of Glass book, the last Throne of Glass book now. And what is with that like little chapter at the end where we have that little alien scene that was just cruel. Oh, I almost forgot my hatred of Kale almost made me forget that we do find out that Maeve, Queen Maeve, is the basically the queen of the Valg, which is I, I it was I feel like it should have been more of a shock. So I mean I didn't think I saw it coming, but it didn't shock me. But that could have been the stupor I was in from reading this. But I do like that we did get a big reveal, so it kind of makes it necessary to read this hunk of book. And also Kel randomly gets very quickly gets married. That seemed a bit weird that that happened so quickly, I guess. But eh. The main thing I'm taking away from this is that I'm really, really excited to see Yurin in the current series. And I can't help but get the prince. I really can't remember his name. There really is, like, a Kate that just referred to the prince as quite a lot. Sartak? I think. I think his name is Sartak. I liked him and I would have liked to have seen him and the Rux. Uh, I really liked the introduction of this entire faction who ride, ride these birds, who live among these birds. I really, I would really love to see some more of them and I hope they're going to play a bit more of a role. I hope, you know, like I said, I did take away some good stuff from this book. Just overall, I wasn't that wowed by it. And I do have to wonder, I mean, obviously, past the Kale thing, I do wonder if some of that is just hype because the Sarah J Maas books, because she's such a big author now, I think her books just get a lot of hype. And I'm not saying they're not necessarily, you know, they're not good books. I just think that nothing can live up to that amount of hype i found the same problem with aqua and i'm not sure if maybe i would have felt differently about aqua if it hadn't been so hyped up it was a good book sort of but like i said nothing can really live up to that proper hype that these books are getting now saying that the last telegraph book i'm completely hyped for and will probably continue to be hyped for and hopefully i won't dislike that as well so yeah this wasn't a proper review review this is more like a just a ranty book talk i do apologize but it's been so long since i read it now and so much happens and it's just it would have taken me forever to go through it and it would have just probably been me just saying what the story is saying what i liked saying what i disliked which is fine for normal reviews but it would have been me moaning a lot more probably uh, and it's just like i said it's a big book there's a lot of stuff that happens in it and it would just would have taken forever so I hope this pleases you I know Jess you've been waiting for this review for ages and I hope my ranty face has met your expectations but that's all from me now if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you really liked it give us a subscribe because that is awesome and I'll see you next time goodbye